The process I'm going to be talking about in this video is erythropoiesis, which is the production of erythrocytes, otherwise known as red blood cells. As we know from our lectures, red blood cells are responsible for transporting oxygen to the body. Because red blood cells only have a lifespan of about 120 days, they are constantly being produced at a rate of about 2 million red blood cells per second. However, this production rate can be increased by the body if needed. Erythropoiesis occurs in the red bone marrow. The process begins with the hematopoietic stem cells, which differentiate into a precursor cell called a proerythroblast. From here, a number of cell divisions and differentiations occur. The proerythroblast develops into an early erythroblast, which is responsible for ribosome synthesis. These ribosomes then synthesize hemoglobin in the late erythroblast stage. As we know, hemoglobin is the major constituent of red blood cells and is the protein responsible for carrying the oxygen in the red blood cell. It also gives the blood its red colour. The late erythroblast develops into a normal blast. At this point, the nucleus of the cell is expelled and it becomes a reticulocyte. The loss of the nucleus means that the cell is now indented, resulting in its biconcave shape. This means it has more space available for oxygen transport. So all of this has been occurring in the red bone marrow. However, the reticulocyte now passes from the red bone marrow to the blood. Here it develops further for about one to two days in circulation before becoming a mature red blood cell. And the process is complete. So normally this process would occur at the same pace as red blood cell destruction. Although, as mentioned earlier, if needed, red blood cell production can occur more rapidly. This is because erythropoiesis occurs in a feedback loop. If there is a decrease in the oxygen carrying capacity of blood, this is known as hypoxia. Hypoxia would be detected by the kidneys, which monitor blood volume and oxygen content of the blood. The kidneys would then release the hormone erythropoietin, or EPO, which stimulates red blood cell production. Proerythroblasts would develop more quickly into reticulocytes. This would complete the negative feedback system by leading to an increase in red blood cells and therefore an increase in oxygen delivery.